Hello and welcome to this new tactical analysis video. This is a re-upload because the first time I did it my voice settings were a bit too low so now, now I've tried to increase them so hopefully this will work and if not I'll just have to do it again. But yeah, we are playing 7v7, me and some guys from QSFE and we have a battle on mines against a team from SO3. They are running a 5100, IS-3, IS-3, Tiger 2, and a Borsig, together with two T1s, as you should. One thing to note before we start is that, unfortunately, we could only have one T1 on our team. But we managed quite fine, as you will find out in this video. So yeah, the first thing I do all well the the standard thing I do on this map is to send the ISS down here as you can see me pinging the 5100 he will be on the back side of the city because then he can get shots in across on these corridors here the T1 is going to the island and I'm going to the middle and then we see what the enemy are up to and then we yeah respond accordingly so it's quite standard for mines because I would never send ISs up above the hill because they have stupidly bad gun depression. So that would just yeah, give us a major disadvantage. It's important for the 1390 whoever might be driving it to get the initial spots and I found that getting over here where I am now is very effective as you will find out Ta -da. and then all of a sudden we have spotted yeah more or less half of the enemy team and they are doing something very interesting they are it's just and then we have the last IS-3 so now what they have done they have sent an IS-3 down here Another IS-3 most likely behind him, either here or here. A lot of tractor is just, I don't know, swagging it down. A Tiger 2 is sitting here and a 5100 out here on the little the peninsula. And most likely, <coughs> as I'm telling the guys in-game, they have a Borsig sitting back here. Or back here, dependent on... Yeah, I don't know. His, his personal preference. I would s assume here. So what I'm doing now is I'm sending the IS-3s back because I'm expecting, or not expecting, but I'm fearing a full-scale push down this 2-3 line because they want to, I don't know why. And I'm also sending the Fish 100 back just in case. So if they go around here we can shoot down on them. So that is what I'm doing. And I got spotted and someone something shot at me but hit the the rock here in front of me. So therefore I know the Borsig is somewhere in the base. And yes, XVM is not working, but I could tell you that these guys are not... They're not amazing players, but they were not bad players either. The 5100, he was my skill level. And the rest, they were below QSF standards, but still not... I mean, not, not red. I think they were orange and... a single green one. But... I mean, in 7v7 it doesn't matter, it's commander skill that decides the most. And here we take out the light tractor quickly. And here, um, I'll pause again quickly. The 5100, as you can see, is going over here, and that was Sologihack, or as I like to call him, Skittles, who uh, is suggested him going over here now, because then he, he can get crossfire in, and it's harder for the IS-3s to form up one big front against these guys because then the feature hunter can sit here and just unload and then they have to turn towards him and then when they do that the IS-3s can poke, poke out and that way you can have yeah a nice bit of crossfire and now I'm telling the T1 to try and hide and survive because we only have one T1 and they have still another one so and I like my T1s I really do they are crucial for this game mode so now what I'm asking my T1 is whether or not he can sneak around this bend here somehow or across here to get out of here because now we don't need him. We have eyes back here, we have eyes here and we have me up here. 
but nothing over here. So that, that is why we want our T1 over here, or I want my T1 over here instead. So I'm asking him, him because I was quite sure, and I was right, that you could drive across here, down here, without being spotted because the T1 is so small. And that is what he does now. And shout out to Runaway Kim in his T1 because he did an amazing job this game. He was the one who spotted the last IS-3 and he will perform hero actions again later, so... Okay, now this is interesting. <coughs> I'll pause. So now you can see that you, they have a Tiger 2 there in between the rocks. And he is looking this way, down here. And now I'm thinking, hmm, this is interesting. What are they doing? I mean, this is not something I've seen before, and it's always nice to meet something you haven't seen before, because that hones your commander skills. So what I was uh, telling the other guys that they were trying to do, and what I still assumed they were trying to do, or hoping would happen, was that if you, you have ice freeze here and here, and a 5100 here, and we push down the, one, the 2 free line into the water or up here, they would have crossfire up on us from many different direction, uh, directions, and the Tiger 2 could turn around and put fire up as well, and the Borsi could sit back here. So th that would just be a massive killing field where it would be very hard to hide yeah, three or four tanks behind that little rock. I mean, one tank could be hidden there, but then it'll be locked down. So, I mean, if we would have gone down the 1-2-3 line, it would have been a massacre. And I, I don't know if they were hoping not to be spotted at all, or if they were just hoping that we would go down here. It is seen sometimes that people push down here, and that's not something I'm a big fan of for, for, for the aforementioned reason. But also interesting is that the Tiger 2 is looking this way. So that means that they most likely do not know where our ISs are. Maybe one of them, because we shot the, the light tractor, but he may be assuming that we still have two over here. And what could happen is that if you push two IS-3s down this alleyway here, and the Tiger 2 is shooting across, well not shooting across, but he he can get shots across and reverse behind, and the Borsig sitting, sitting up here can get shots all the way down, and that way you have, again, crossfire going in. And if you have a passive IS-3 force that will just sit here, they will either go out, take a massive hit, and then find out, no, bad idea, and reverse. But that, that it gives the, the red team an a HP advantage for later. Or they will be dumb-ish and sit here and just try and shoot it out with both of them. And since IS-3s are blind as bats and the Borsig is very well camoed, they will most likely never spot him. So that was interesting, and of course going over the hill, in my opinion, is an absolute no-go. Because IS-3 is again, bad gun depression, they have a Tiger 2 all the way down at the bottom, as you, as you can see it down this slope here. So that the IS-3 is sitting behind this rock, have to expose the whole lower plate, plus more, to get a shot on the Tiger 2. And he can, he can uh, easily manage to pull off a shot into a lower plate and back off before the IS-3 can return fire. So that was, in my opinion, an absolute no-go. I mean, that's not an option at all. It's either left or right when uh, with IS-3s. And especially if when they have a Borsig behind there with... He has solid cover, he can drive out, take a shot, and even if he is spotted, he can just drive nicely into cover, reload, pop up the other side, take another shot, drive in, and just rinse and repeat until we have no health. And maybe he bounces once or twice, but... He is not taking any damage, so he's absolutely fine with that. So, if I remember correctly, I will now start telling the other guys what they are doing. I'll start spamming the map. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm asking the T1 to move over to the right-hand flank. And now I'm telling how the Tiger 2 is looking over to the right, and they have two ice freeze here, 5100, and if we push down this way, we will get wrecked. With the Borsig back here. As I just told you, so now I'm just telling the guys in-game, because in-game you can't pause. But here, I pause so you can, I could explain it a bit, a bit more in detail. So now I was just having a little artistic thinking break, just to consider. 
and then I'm telling the IS3 to move over here and Sutek in his IS3 asks us if, if he can take, take a blind shot and I'm like yeah sure and again shout out to Mid or to Ronnie Kim he does an excellent job taking out the enemy T1 and BAM we have a T1 advantage even though we only started with, with one and our T1 is full health now what I'm asking all uh, Sulaji Hack in his 5100 he will take over the IS3's position just in case they push oh and see now this is an interesting moment and I don't know why they did it they are now moving the Tiger 2 from here to over here so all of a sudden he's in close range distance of our IS force and here is the T1 who spots him I mean again shout out to you Ronami excellent job so here I'm like why to be honest I that move had has now put him in a big disadvantage I don't know if he was hoping to just sneak around or if he was hoping to get some spots or whatnot but now that he, he is here it's way easier for our ISs to just whoops oh it's zoomed in <laughs> just now I'm just trying to get some spots so I'll just quickly so what we can do now with the ISS and what we will do is they can just drive by and take very effective snapshots at him at this close range and then get over here into this dip and then take him out effectively without the Borsig being able to do anything whereas if he would have been down here that would have been a whole other matter, matter. I mean he could sit down here and that would be very speculative snapshots on the move I mean it's an IS so he's not going to hit that uh, reliably whereas on this distance he can just smack him as we will see will happen so that, that that was I don't know if it was a misplay by the enemy team just unfortunate that I spotted it when they did and because the Tiger 2 is stationary and behind the bush our T1 can't spot him anymore so now I am discussing with the that the guys what to do and here we had a slight misunderstanding uh, Logihack he suppo oh, so suggested that he could move up to the hill and I said yes but I think one of the ISs asked at the same time if they should push and they heard my yes as a yes to their suggestion and I said no 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 because and also I sent the T1 back to base because again he I need his eyes where we are not ourselves just in case they counter push just to clarify, uh, the T1 back here to spot any ISs who would like to push our base because we want to know that beforehand because then me and the 5100 we can relocate to here and then just decap and take them out if needed until our ISs either push themselves or go back and clear out so I'm not worried about them capping us out I just want the T1 to be there just in case they do it I mean and now what I, why I sent the 5100 up here is to give covering fire together with me for whatever might move across here because I am expecting the 5100 and the ISS to try and get across here when our ISS push up here because they aren't again they weren't stupid these guys so that would be a reasonable thing to assume they would do and just in case they pushed I had a T1 to cover and spot that for me so that is why we have the Fish 100 up here now instead of back at the corner and then Logic is confirming that the Borsig is back there because he got spotted and now unfortunately it's not a disaster but unfortunately Logic he <coughs> he took some damage and now you can see the IS is working and as you can see the Tiger has no chance whatsoever three ISs he's getting swarmed <coughs> and the Borsig can't do anything one of the ISs is it actually looks like took a quite big hit maybe it's the Tiger who rolled high I don't know but I don't care <laughs> oh yeah and an interesting little thing I don't know if you noticed and I didn't point it out while he was alive but I was not pushing this bush in front of me here while the tiger was alive because he can proxy spot me from his location I don't know if he will on that specific location but he can in general so therefore I waited until he was dead to drive up 
to this bush in front of me so I can get spots and Lodjaki spotted the Fish 100 I spotted the IS-3s and they... I don't know what they're doing maybe they thought, okay now we, we pushed the hill but they decided not to and now they're in no man's land but that's fine, they have two IS-3s down there that can't do jack shit oh and now we have the Bolte and Fish 100 out in the open as expected so we, ju we just unload on them from up here maybe not the most effective fire but it is effective enough, enough that the that the guys can't fire at our ISs while they close the distance as you can see and yeah as you can see it's just now it's just clean up I mean they're dead IS is out in the open mm. not something you want with an IS and I'm lucky to track this IS here well some would argue it's skill I I would argue it's lucky when you have a French 1390 gun it doesn't always hit where you aim so and another thing you can look at is we have all of our tanks on low-ish health but none of our tanks are dead so I mean this is fine you have you have the health to be used for stuff like this just take damage spread it out and you're fine as long as your gun is in the game and also they had no effective fire on us during the game at any point I mean we technically this map was interesting but unfortunately for the enemy we managed to come out on top because at no point were they in a numerical advantage whatsoever first we took out the the tiger the tiger 2 and we had three eyes freeze against him so that's a no contest then they had uh, one fish 100 and one borsig against well basically all of our five main tanks and then they have had two eyes freeze against the rest of our main force so at no point were they in an advantage they were always in a in a disadvantage and that is something you should strive to do when you're commanding 7v7 because the less the less of the engagement is um, the better yeah yeah okay I'll try and rephrase that in a non-stupid way it is better to leave as little as possible up to individual skill and as much as possible up to just being in a advantage straight on because I mean tanks they can RNGs will not, not be with us and so on and so forth so it's important to make sure that RNGs and personal misplay or a personal well played from the enemy will not leave us losing a game so it's all about just making sure that they can't do anything about it it's just tough luck for them and that is what we did this game but yeah thank you for watching and I will hope to do more of these as I get the interesting games. I will not do it on some easy ruffle stomping of a scrub team because that's not fun for you or us to show. So I'll do it on the I <coughs> tactically interesting games like this one. I mean it wasn't difficult but it was tactically very interesting to do. And yeah thanks for watching and you are more than welcome to give me feedback on how my voice settings are now. I hope they are better, but if not, please uh, give me a shout and I'll I'll reconsider how how to do it. But yeah, hopefully I will see you later for more videos. Bye bye.